Hello friends, in this video we are going to look at how we can prepare hydrogen in the laboratory and some other different ways we can produce hydrogen. Method number one, we are going to look at reaction of metals with dilute acids. When you look at most metals that are relatively active, that is to say those above hydrogen in this reactivity series, this is our hydrogen and the order of reactivity tends to decrease downwards or it increases upwards. All metals above hydrogen, for example, magnesium and zinc in this case, they can all displace hydrogen in the acid so that we can produce hydrogen gas. So magnesium can displace hydrogen from sulfuric acid to form hydrogen gas and then magnesium sulfate aqueous because magnesium sulfate can dissolve in some of the liquid present in the acid. Then we also have zinc. Zinc is a metal that is above hydrogen in our reactivity series. So it can also displace the hydrogen from the chloride in hydrochloric acid thus producing zinc chloride. Take note of the two because zinc has valence two and then we balance with the two. This is one way we can prepare hydrogen from dilute acids and metals. And in our lab preparation for hydrogen, we shall realize that we shall mainly use zinc granules because zinc is relatively cheap and it's not highly violent when reacting with, with the acid. Yes. So that's why we should prefer using zinc. So when we use our dilute hydrochloric acid, then open the tap, we shall see that once the acid reacts with the zinc granules, we shall always form a gas that we shall see as bubbles of a colorless gas, and then we shall collect our hydrogen over water because it is slightly soluble in water. If at all we would like to speed up this chemical reaction, we can then use copper to sulfate as our catalyst. Chemical equation, like we have seen in our previous slide, a metal zinc granules with dilute hydrochloric acid shall form zinc chloride and hydrogen. Yes, this zinc chloride is also soluble in water. That's why we have here aqueous. It will dissolve in the few water molecules present in our acid. Secondly, we have to prepare also dry hydrogen. It's a common question that's required because our hydrogen actually can have some water vapor in it. However, for us to prepare dry hydrogen, we shall have to introduce in a wash bottle containing concentrated sulfuric acid. This is sulfuric acid with little water content and it has one property. It has high affinity for water. So concentrated sulfuric acid is water loving. Yes. So to try and remove all the water molecules present in the gas that we are producing from the zinc granules and the dilute hydrochloric acid. As such, we shall collect our dry hydrogen gas by upward deliver because hydrogen is actually very light. So we can use upward delivery because it's lighter than air. Yes, this is the only adaptation we can put in so that we can dry the gas. Constituted sulfuric acid having a high affinity for water. So it removes the water content from our acid. Yes, the second method is electrolysis of water. Electrolysis comes from the from two words, electricity and then lysis meaning breaking or splitting. So actually this is the splitting of water when we pass electricity through it. You, sp you split the water and you pass electricity through it. So in this area you can write electricity. So when you, when you complete this circuit you realize that our water will then be broken down into corresponding ions, the hydroxide ion and the hydrogen ions. However, it's sometimes also better to use acidified water for this process to be simplified. So what happens is that the hydrogen ions will always go to the cathode while the hydroxide ions will go to the anode. And in this case, our hydrogen ions will pick up electrons from the cathode and then they will be they will become hydrogen atoms yes but because hydrogen is rel relat relatively 
non-monoatomic, it will always combine to form a diatomic molecule, which will be hydrogen gas. So at our cathode, we shall have hydrogen ions gaining electrons to form hydrogen gas. So here we shall form our hydrogen gas, while at the other side, we can collect our oxygen gas. This is another way of preparing hydrogen from water. Then lastly, we have action of water on metals. Most metals tend to react with water. For example, sodium can react violently with water, actually cold water, to produce hydrogen gas. And the solution that will turn red litmus paper blue will be left behind, which is sodium hydroxide. However, some other metals which are less reactive than sodium and potassium, we shall realize that we shall need to heat them and in presence of steam. Yes. For example, here we have our magnesium. This is magnesium. It's being heated. Together here we have our cotton wool where we have our water because it was soaked in water and then we are heating it. So we shall form steam that will then come and react with the magnesium to form our magnesium oxide and hydrogen. So the hydrogen will continue and the magnesium oxide will remain here as white powder. Yes. So we can then burn off our hydrogen gas as shown. So magnesium being heated, it can react with steam from the heated cotton wool, the wet cotton wool, to form magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas. Yes, these are the three main ways we can use to prepare hydrogen in the lab. Yes, thank you for watching. Maybe concerning the lab preparation from metals with acids, we rarely use nitric acid because it's highly oxidizing and the hydrogen you could, add, you could produce could be somehow oxidized so that it becomes water. That's why we rarely use nitric acid to prepare hydrogen. So we somehow stick to hydrogen chloride and sulfuric acid. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.